um, today we have a busy morning to present our project. Uh, first of all, first of all, I would like to, to present myself. My name is Barbara Gagliardi. I'm the coordinator of the project of the EGAI project. And we have also um, a long list of welcoming addresses. Uh, and I'm very, I, I really appreciate uh, all these welcoming addresses. So maybe uh, we could start with the welcoming addresses of the president of the uh, Université Savoie Mont Blanc, uh, who is also the current president of the UNITA Governance Board. So please, uh, uh, Monsieur Galez. Thank you, Barbara. And uh, good morning, everybody. So I will uh, say a few words. Uh, it's a first, of course, a pleasure to welcome you all to this kickoff meeting of the EGAI project uh, supported by uh, the UNITA Alliance. And I would like, of course, to thank the colleagues who have contributed to the construction of the project, especially Barbara, uh, who, have just, who has just uh, talked. This kickoff marks a turning point in the short but very rich history of UNITA. We have learned to know each other we work together with great pleasure, and we have built solid and effective collaborations. Undoubtedly, UNITA's strong identity has been of great help because the challenges facing our territories are very similar. With this project, and we very much hope the next renewal of the label by the European Commission, we are now entering a new phase, the phase of institutionalization of UNITA. UNITA chose the European Economic Interest Grouping as the existing instrument to facilitate cooperation between its members and with third parties. Of course, this tool is not fully adapted to the status and the missions of universities. And then the final objective is therefore to make it evolve towards an object that is more in line with our activities. To do this, we need to deepen our knowledge of the possibilities it offers. To a large extent, this has already been done. Test it against the activities of higher education, research and innovation, especially lifelong learning. And finally, propose legal changes to move towards a European grouping of academic interest that better match, matches our needs. This is precisely the program of the EGAI project. But let me say again that beyond this essential step in strengthening our collaboration and cooperations, our shared long-term vision remains the same. The creation of a true European university, institutionalized and of confederal type. We believe it is on this condition only that we will be able to respond to the ambitious objectives of the European Commission and to our own purposes. We know that the road will be long. We also know that there is an urgent need to deepen the European areas of education, research and innovation, to assert our common values and to strengthen the place of Europe in, the world, in a world of uncertainty. I wish you a fruitful and instructive meeting on behalf of the 250,000 students and 21,000 staff of the UNITA Alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to especially thank the representatives of the European institution who are with us today. And so especially uh, Ms. Tina Delva, uh, who is a deputy head of unit of the European Commission's Directorate uh, for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. I'm here, so 
Okay. But it's nice to be here and, and thank you for the invitation. Ah, wonderful. Now I see you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there are so many people, so no problem. I didn't find I didn't I didn't find you. So welcome of being here and the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Uh, from from our side, uh, from the Commission side, it's it's really our pleasure to be here today for this kickoff meeting of the AGI project, um, with which you really aim to institutionalize your ever closer university cooperation, as was also uh, mentioned by by director before, uh, because we would really like to congratulate you for being a pioneer and for starting uh, and continuing really this deeper part of of cooperation and for embarking on this journey together, because transnational cooperation has already been in the DNA of many higher education institutions across Europe over the past uh, decades. But as one of the 44 European universities, you are taking it a step further. You are, to, you are bringing together several comprehensive universities from all across Europe, from different sizes, and you're also teaming up uh, even with institutions from Switzerland and Ukraine. So. It's only through such deep cooperation with a lo common long-term vision that we can gather the necessary brain power to really devise the solutions to our big societal challenges. And your work on renewable energies, cultural heritage, circle economy and the bioeconomy is exemplary in this respect. And with your strategy, aiming to trigger new levels of long-term institutionalized cooperation between higher education institutions, uh, you aim to, to go bigger. And what we see based on earlier consultations with you and, and other European universities, alliances and member states is that it was indeed um, that you were still facing barriers to implement your work, pl work plans. Uh, these barriers could be administrative, regulatory, both at the national and the European level. And one of those barriers indeed is this uh, uh, lack of illegal status that you were having at the um, level of the alliances and based on our discussions with you we felt that you you had this need in order to to work stronger together uh, for example to share financial human digital and physical resources infrastructures and services um, as well as also linked to your joint educational and and research activities and uh, for that we are really happy that you participate in this call for proposals um, this pilot call on testing uh, a European uh, legal status uh, at, at um at your university, at your European university, um, because for those of you that are not fully uh, aware yet of the, of the current picture, um, note that many alliances are currently using uh, national level tools to um, to implement their ambition, but several of them are telling us that they are they are facing constraints with these uh, national level tools. You have some European level tools, such as European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation or the European Economic Economic interest grouping. This is the one that UNITA will test. And these tools do already exist at European level, but they were not, um, they already exist for, for quite a while and they are not specifically tailored to, to higher education. So this is specifically the, the purpose of this call to see, and, and also for your project, to see whether these tools, these existing European tools, whether they um, whether they match your ambitions or whether adaptations are needed, or whether, for example, an entirely new European level tool um, would be needed. So, and this is what we would like to get out of uh, out of your project, so that you can give us concrete advice based on on your practice, whether you can really expand this European economic interest grouping to a real European grouping of academic interests, or whether you would suggest uh, to set up a new tool, and if so, what what features would this tool need to have? So, from our side, we really would like to closely work together with you so that we can mutually influence each other. We really need your input, your experience to feed into our future policy making at the European level. Um, together with the executive agency who is also following your, your uh, project from, from close by, we are there to support you uh, along this road. Um, we wish you lots of success in, in developing further the AGI project and, and in really bringing this, this more uh, systemic partnership to life. 
uh, we are there to support you. So this is also a plea to the to the people actually uh, working on the project. Don't hesitate to reach out to us in case of questions, in, in case uh, you, you wish to brainstorm with us, uh, even beyond the, the formal meeting. So also uh, very informally, we are there to uh, to support. So thank you for this invitation to this kickoff meeting. Um, I hope you are all motivated to, to make it work. Uh, for sure, we are for the future policy developments. Um, so we are happy to, to start this journey together. Thank you. Thank you very much for your support and also for this um, welcoming address, which is was more than a welcoming address, is quite a presentation of our project. And so mm -hmm. I'm very happy that we share exactly the same vision and that you know so well uh, our project. And so the floor is um, is um, for Maria Luisa Garcia Minguez, who is the deputy head of unit at the European Commission of uh, Education, Audiovisual and Cultural Executive Agency. Uh, thank you for being here and the floor is yours. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Uh, um, thank you to all of you, to the to the rector, to the president of uh, University Université uh, Savoie Mont Blanc, and the president of UNITA as well. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, from my side and uh, the institution that I'm representing, uh, which is the European Education and Culture Executive Agency. I have uh, to uh, support uh, what uh, Tine was saying about uh, the, the implementation of your project and how we are going to be uh, uh, behind uh, supportive in this in this journey with together with you. So um, I would like to to say as well and congratulate uh, you for being among the, the, among the, the successful project uh, that has been selected in this policy experimentation poll. And this experimentation is crucial, as uh, Tine was saying in this, in this context. So, uh, well, this is, this is already a success for you to be here. Uh, and we expect, uh, of course, a lot from your side. Uh, we saw uh, even in the title of your uh, of of this event uh, that you are uh, your objectives are very very clear so uh, the project the guy project aims to strengthen university cooperation at european level and as you said in the title of this event from the european grouping of economic interest into the european grouping of academic interest which is clearly uh, which clearly reveals uh, your objectives. Um, we expect that really that your pilot uh, project leads to significant results and impact in terms of improve the knowledge and evidence base in the field of institutionalized cooperation instrument, uh, demonstrating European added value by identifying and sharing good practices and lessons, of course, and ensure this uh, what uh, Tine was saying, this scalability of proposing uh, recommendations for, for the future. So uh, we are also aware, uh, this is something that we were debating with, uh, I think Barbara, you were with us uh, during the, the meeting on 31st of, uh, of March, in which we did as well this uh, kickoff meeting with all the projects in this policy experimentation uh, group. That we are aware uh, that you are going to do all of this work, all of this test, uh, this examination, this analysis of the different possibilities on this particular topic in a very uh, limited time, only 12 months. We are aware of that. This is uh, why uh, I will uh, really pass you the message that my colleagues. Uh, we are a little group, but we are uh, a team uh, behind. And myself uh, from the executive agency, we will do our best uh, to support you in the implementation of the your grant agreement that you have with us and to follow very closely the progress of your work. So we are really, I can to say that we are really eager to discover the good practices that will emerge. 
And uh, I wish you uh, all the best in, uh, in this adventure that uh, has just started for you and for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this warm welcoming address and, and for your support, which will be very important for our project. And so uh, now the floor is to our rector, the professor Stefano Geuna, who is with us, I know. Yes, yes. So good morning, everyone. Sorry for delay. I just uh, reached, but I have the opportunity to listen to the last uh, to welcome uh, address. And I also thank very much for the support. Uh, just a few words uh, in, uh, in, uh, in welcoming all the participants and, and saying good luck for our work. We know that the time is little. Uh, on our side, we will put uh, all our best for reaching the goal in the in the dedicated time. We have to say that we are thinking about this issue since a long time, so we start on a good basis. And uh, especially, I'm particularly uh, uh, I, I particularly love this uh, this idea of uh, of using the the of changing somehow the perspective of an existing model. European grouping of economic interest and, and proposing and trying to see how this model, which works, of course, very well for uh, especially for company industries and, of course, is not prepared for for academics, but has a, a number of, of issues that can be very useful for us. But also we know that some of the rules are not perfect for academic institutions. So the goal is to try to see how eventually there could be some proposal for uh, developing new laws, new rules that can uh, facilitate uh, uh, the grouping of university. And, and the, the aim that we have is very complex because, as you might know, everyone knows here, uh, as a single university, some of us has hundreds of years of history. And of course, we, we, we are not, we will not able to merge uh, uh, cancelling completely our past, and that would not be good. But on the other side, we really want to merge in single units. So combining the preservation of our tradition, centenary tradition in many cases, with the need to create uh, the, some new entities that are really European, in which we can merge not our tradition, cancelling them, but merge our activities in teaching, in research, in public engagement, uh, in uh, deep uh, technology transfer. So many new issues that really can benefit from uh, the European level, which goes uh, above the national level. So it's a big challenge for us. We, we know that it's not easy, but we, are, we, we have been discussing this and we are ourselves the case study because basically we are a group of, uh, of universities that uh, that has already started this process of uh, of uh, entering the european alliance uh, initiative mentality so i think we are the the good uh, case study to to work on and uh, we really hope to have uh, important results uh, in in the due time and with this hope uh, i i say good work to everyone and uh, let me thank uh, all the people that participate in our university to this application, of course, the main uh, responsibility and uh, and the response, the, the winners of, of are them because they have done a very good uh, application and a very good project, and I'm sure that on this basis uh, we can be successful in our goal. Thank you very much and good work to everyone. Thank you very much for these welcoming addresses. Uh, I should also thank our rector because uh, he he was the one who invented the name of the new grouping that we are imagining, the European Grouping of Academic Interest. So uh, it was the it it, it I have was the copyright. The, no, I, I will share the copyright. It's no, <laughs> <button on that. laughs> no copyright. it's not mine, but it's uh, from it's, our rector. It's of everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I, I would also um, especially thank uh, the representative of national ministers uh, 
uh, and other authorities in the field of higher education uh, who are here, and especially uh, from the Minister of Education of Romania. We have uh, Ms. Lumina Mattei and Ms. Madalina Mattei. Uh, for, from the Portuguese uh, Secretaria do Estado do Ensino Superior. I'm, I apologize for my, for my pronunciation in Portuguese. I'm for sure I'm very bad. Uh, Mr. Arthur Santoaya uh, and, and also Ms. Emily Laborel uh, a representation de la Delegation, Delegation aux Affaires Européennes et Internationales du Ministère de l'Education Française. Uh, pour euh, la délégation, euh, Miss Rosalie Dachy, qui est chargée de mission politique et programme de l'Union européenne pour l'enseignement supérieur à la délégation des affaires européennes et internationales. Et encore, pour le député directeur général de Student Services and Institutional Relations of the Spanish General Secretariat of Universities, Miss Margarita de Lescano Murica Nunez. I really apologize for my very bad pronunciation in Spanish, uh, but uh, as I, will, I would like to point out in my presentation, the support of national institutions is very important for the success of these initiatives. So their presence here is a first uh, very important step for the success of our project. Um, I would like to um, say some words uh, about our project. So let me share a PPT presentation. Okay, I would like to give you an overview of the AGI project to summarize our vision and the main goals of the project and the activities planned within it. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to spend some word about uh, our vision uh, because uh, as uh, directors already um, underlined, uh, we shared the idea that uh, fostering academic cooperation uh, and uh, as the EU institution has underlined also in their communication, building bridges for e effective European higher education cooperation is not only a strategic choice for the universities and higher education institutions involved, but it is something more. Uh, because academic cooperation is an essential tool for a, more, for a more perfect unity of the single market, but also for social and economic cohesion. Uh, I think uh, we could say that it is also an important instrument to consolidate European identity, and strengthen European citizenship, overpassing the merely economic dimension. So the European citizen should no longer be seen just as a market burger. Uh, and I think that uh, academic and cultural cooperation serves this goal. Uh, mm, indeed, uh, the recent uh, European Commission communication on uh, European strategy for universities lists a number of values uh, related to fostering uh, university cooperation. And these values concern, of course, the economic dimension, but also a more effective protection for human rights and other EU shared values. And I can recall, for instance, the history of the foundation of the University of Berlin, according to the manifesto of um, Wilhelm von Humboldt, which was conceived as an instrument for the consolidation of German nation. Uh, so this is the general vision of our project, to go behind uh, the national dimension in order to serve the ultimate goals of European Union. Uh, the project was, uh, has been conceived within uh, UNITA, our university alliance, as you know, uh, which was uh, funded in 2020. Uh, and namely, it was conceived by the six uh, founders of the alliance, uh, the Università di Torino, the Université Savoie Montblanc, uh, the Università de, de Saragossa, the Università Thea de Vest di Timisoara, the Université de Pau de Pays de la Dour and the Université de Beira Interior. Uh, 
the project started the 1st of April and uh, as it was already pointed out, it is supposed to end uh, um, in a year. So we have a really short time. Uh, we also benefit from a large number of associated and supported partners. Between them, we have six universities, universities which are associated partners of UNITA and which will be in the next call, within the next call, full members of the consortium. Uh, we have several national authorities in the field of higher education. Uh, as I, al I already pointed out, their support will be seminal in order to the success of the project. Uh, because, uh, as you as you know, uh, the European Union has not a full competence in this, in this field. At the European level, there is a um, complementary competence uh, in the field of education and uh, um, shared competence in the field of research. So, uh, the idea is uh, co of uh, co-creating policies at the European level necessarily involves the point of view of our national authorities. Uh, we have the Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, of Turin, which is the national registering authority for the European Grouping of Economic Interest, and uh, which will be involved in some activities. Uh, we have another alliances, Alliance, the European University of Technology EUT+, uh, because we both uh, uh, share the idea of exchanging point of view ideas will be a very important tool for the success of uh, our project. So we, we will exchange and share activities. And also we have another European grouping of economic interest, uh, which is active in the field of research and innovation. Uh, the general objectives of the um, project is to analyze, to test and to facilitate the use of a European grouping of economic interest as an instrument of institutionalized cooperation with the final goal of designing a new grouping. Here name, as I already recall, European grouping of academic interest, the acronym of the project. Uh, but I should say that uh, uh, we have um, a strong background because uh, um, we already registered uh, a European grouping of economic interest. Uh, we draft the status uh, during the last uh, two years. Uh, a special task force of legal experts uh, was created within uh, UNITA and we worked uh, on the statutes and uh, we registered the statute the 25th of January. Uh, we choose this kind of grouping because it has uh, some pros. Uh, especially it, has, uh, it is regulated by the European Union law. And uh, as it was already pointed out by um, Tine Delbe, uh, it is very important to, to choose uh, uh, a European grouping, uh, which has an automatic recognition in our national legal systems. And uh, I think it is also an ideological um, choice, uh, not only a practical choice. Uh, because uh, from the beginning of our discussion, we thought that uh, it would be more successful uh, to choose something regulated at the European level instead of a national association or foundation on another legal entity established only at the national level. Uh, on the other hand, this is a very flexible and uh, unbureaucratic organization uh, which has a mixed nature between profit and not, and not profit, uh, and which has a full possibility of economic activities. But, uh, as it uh, has been already pointed, pointed out, uh, it is not tailored for the academic activities, and we are fully aware of this. Uh, it's true that uh, some activity organized uh, by European by um, university public institutions could be viewed uh, as economic activities. 
on the, also the Commission, uh, the European Commission in a communication explicitly recognized this possible economic nature. But on the other hand, it's true that uh, not all uh, our activities has an economic nature. So uh, we should try to better understand how to use this kind of grouping, what we can do with this kind of grouping and what it's not possible to do with it. And on the other hand, uh, we should uh, try to analyze its limitation in order to overpass them with a new kind of grouping. The activities that we planned uh, uh, first of all, um, we want to analyze and define these activities in order to understand what could be conceived as a, in economic activities regarding to the institutional activities organized within uh, our institution. And this will be a real legal analysis. Then we want to make our grouping concretely operational. Uh, we don't want it to uh, uh, remain as an empty box, but uh, we want to do our best in order to facilitate its activities. And this means, first of all, the elaboration of a legal toolkit uh, for the provision of personnel, for experimenting uh, uh, joint uh, recruitment strategies for the secondment of personnel, uh, but also for the transfer of data and material resources. And this entails uh, a comparative analysis of the relevant legal system because all these uh, aspects are regulated by national public law uh, because all the institutions involved in this project are public institutions. Uh, so it, it, it means uh, elaborate models of administrative decisions, model of contracts, regulations, and so on about all these aspects. Then we would like to test our grouping. Uh, testing the grouping uh, means, uh, in our view, organize a first uh, test activity uh, which will be carried out uh, by the European Economic Interest Grouping. Uh, this activity will be in the field of lifelong learning activity because UNITA already uh, has an important experience in this field. So uh, we will talk a little bit uh, more about it in, in today, but uh, uh, it will be aimed to the upskilling and reskilling of small and medium-sized enterprises through the issuance of micro-credential. And this test will be useful also for the elaboration of the legal toolkit, because uh, in our view, uh, we will write a report about uh, this test and we will use this report in order to uh, change and uh, make mm, and overpass some possible limitation of the toolkit and so to experiment the toolkit and so on. And then uh, we would like to contribute to the policy creation at the European level with the elaboration of a proposal of, of EU regulation uh, for the improvement uh, of the existing institutionalized cooperation EU instruments. As I was, say, as I was saying, uh, the European Grouping of Economic Interests could not be the final choice of institutional cooperation at the European level. And we are fully aware of this. We chose this instrument because it was very flexible, uh, very easy to register, and, and, it, and it, it was very a very quick process. So we could have a first result of a stable cooperation in a medium-term perspective. But uh, even if we don't want to merge, uh, because uh, we have a strong uh, identity uh, from uh, the Middle Age uh, established uh, and so on. And so all of us are very jealous of, of our identities. So even if we don't want to merge, uh, we want to have an instrument to share our activities at the European level, to be more visible uh, and also to elaborate joint strategies uh, uh, in a stable and permanent way. 
Um, and I think that we think that the European grouping of economic interests could be a good compromise for the beginning, but uh, it could not be the final choice uh, for a so important uh, goal, uh, for a so important contribution to the European uh, establishment of uh, the truly European university. Uh, so we would like to contribute to this debate uh, by drafting a first uh, draft of regulation uh, to, for, for this kind of grouping that we named European Grouping of Academic Interest. And then we will try to organize, we will organize some dissemination activities and especially a scientific conference in Brussels and a winter school in Timisoara. Uh, more addressed to professionals, but uh, my colleagues will explain more about it. And I know that uh, it's a long list of activities, but I'm fully confident that uh, we will uh, succeed. So I hope so, uh, especially with the, the support of all of you who are here with us today. So thank you very much with your attention and I will pass the floor to my colleague. Uh, the first one will be Arnaud Lecourt. Arnaud is a professor de droit privé et de sciences criminelles at l'Université de Pau et de Pays de la Dour. And he, he is also director de l'Institut d'études judiciaires. Arnaud will talk uh, about the EEG as an instrument of academic cooperation. He was the one who, the first one to suggest uh, this kind of solution. So uh, we, I think that uh, uh, he will be able to explain uh, to explain a little bit uh, more about it. Arnaud, thank the you. floor is yours. Barbara. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for your participation. Thank you, Barbara, for your very nice presentation. Um, I'm sorry, I will cut my camera because my, my connection is very, very bad. <laughs> Um, I try to share with you my slides. Uh, work in progress. <laughs> It's a little bit slow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Barbara, can you help me? <laughs> okay, if you can, if you can send me your your slide, uh, okay. I will uh, share with you. Okay. For you. Okay. I I don't think that you already sent. Okay. 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 Uh, sorry, Doc, I, I'm going to give you um, a, a very general and short uh, presentation for my part in uh, six uh, stage and in five or uh, maybe 10 minutes because uh, Barbara has uh, already said many important things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the first time, uh, general uh, objectives. Uh, as uh, th these uh, objectives uh, can be, uh, for my part, uh, summarized in three points. Um, as Barbara said, uh, the EJHI project uh, should enable UNITA members to uh, analyze the functioning, test the relevance, and facilitate the use of uh, an EJHIJ as a legal instrument for institutionalized university cooperation. And um, the uh, aim of this project, as Barbara said too, <laughs> is uh, to contribute to the strategic and uh, legislative context of the uh, European Union. It is uh, about building bridges for effective European cooperation in higher education, 
aiming at the development of a new model of European academic interest uh, grouping. Uh, this point in particular is uh, of great interest to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Europe uh, in France, but I think also to um, our uh, partners. And uh, in fact, uh, the EHIG uh, will be used as a test bed uh, for institutionalized cooperation between uh, European universities. Uh, in a second stage, um, I, I would like to uh, present quickly uh, the difficulties, uh, the difficulties of the of the project. They were uh, numerous because of the different legal system uh, of the partners. Uh, as you know, uh, even the European regulations include options that each member state can exercise or not, and um, there are also um, uh, local particularities, for example, on the status of university staff. For the most part, uh, the compatibility of the uh, EHIG, which is uh, usually commercial uh, in nature, uh, with strictly academic teaching and research activities uh, raises a large number of questions and uh, these uh, issues require a further legal analysis and analysis and this is our project uh, firstly it will be necessary uh, as barbara said too uh, it will be necessary to clearly uh, delimit uh, the services that the partner uh, universities can actually entrust uh, to the HIHIG. Uh, indeed, uh, we are, and they are all public entities established for purposes of general interest. And this can be a problem uh, for the exercise of uh, economic activities, including auxiliary incidental uh, economic uh, activities. But, uh, and that's a problem. Uh, at the same time, uh, this EHIG is also established uh, with the aim of developing and intensifying a cooperation between the partners through the exclusive provision of auxiliary activities of an economic uh, nature. So, the relevance uh, of the project is uh, uh, a question. To uh, overcome, uh, finally, uh, these uh, envisaged uh, difficulties, uh, it's uh, therefore appropriate to carry out a study uh, to identify and circumscribe the type of activities uh, that can be entrusted uh, concretely to the HEHIG in the light uh, of the European Commission's definition of joint transnational interdisciplinary educational uh, activities. Uh, further uh, research is needed uh, on whether these new activities, the famous auxiliary activities, incidental activities, uh, are conditional or not, uh, whether they can be funded or not, and uh, whether competition law rules apply uh, in this case, and um, in particular, uh, the regulation of state aid, or uh, maybe um, uh, the regulation of uh, anti-competitive practices. Finally, uh, it will be necessary to analyze the legal instruments for sharing uh, resources both uh, human and material. And um, as you know, uh, this question uh, is essential, uh, particularly uh, in the light of the unlimited joint and several liability of the partners that characterizes uh, the EEHIG uh, framework. So, um, in um, in relation to um, specific objectives of the project, uh, 
the UNITA partners identify uh, the HIHIG as an appropriate tool for long-term institutionalized cooperation. Uh, this uh, choice was made uh, following an in-depth uh, analysis to highlight its advantages over other instruments uh, offered by the European Union legal system. And uh, in particular, uh, including the European Grouping for Territorial Cooperation, le groupement territorial, le groupement européen de coopération territoriale, the Societas Europea, la Société Européenne, and the European Consortium for uh, Research Infrastructures, le Consortium Européen. Uh, the um, the uh, analysis carried out by the partners led to a first uh, exclusion, uh, the exclusion of the, of the uh, EGTC uh, because of its too complex constitution procedures uh, and its own nature, which seems more appropriate for uh, cross-border cooperation between, between uh, uh, neighboring member states and uh, maybe uh, uh, um, between uh, industrial partners for industrial projects. The Societas Europeae uh, was also excluded because of the constraints imposed by national legal system, in particular in French law, uh, on the creation of profit-making uh, profit entities uh, by uh, public bodies. It's totally uh, forbidden in French system. And the consortium was considered too narrow uh, in scope for the missions associated with universities. More generally, uh, the uh, EHIG's constitution is very simple and unrestrictive, with no minimum share capital, it's very important for us, for our partners, and uh, no need for its members uh, to demonstrate any specific capacity uh, like uh, commercial capacity, for uh, example. So, uh, one of the one of the strengths of the HIHIG is the flexibility of the uh, instrument, which allows for versatile organizational solutions. It can be uh, it can be easily adapted uh, to the unique characteristic of the university community. And, uh, for example, uh, the various components of the university, professor, administrative staff, uh, can be transposed into ad hoc management bodies to be defined by the EHIG um, statute. And, uh, uh, as you know, uh, as Barbara said, uh, another uh, advantage uh, is the simplicity of the procedures for setting up uh, the HIHIG, which requires only registration uh, with a national authority, Registre du Commerce et des Sociétés en France, for example, and uh, no prior uh, approval from other national uh, authorities. Um, so, to uh, enable systemic, uh, structural, and uh, sustainable cooperation, and to test uh, the HIHIGs, uh, it's um, required uh, to, in a first time, analyze and define the activities that can be entrusted to the HIHIG in light uh, of the notion of economic activity. Attention on this point because uh, these act economic activities of the uh, EHIG can only be only be auxiliary incidental to those of its uh, members. And for um, for this analysis, um, we will carry out uh, a preliminary study, which will have 
two purposes. First, to clarify the notion of economic activity within uh, the meaning of European Union, uh, Union case law. And in a second time, uh, to uh, identify the economic activities that are compatible with the institutional missions of universities and uh, that can therefore be entrusted concretely to the EHIG. And uh, on this point, uh, the project team will be in charge of the implementation uh, of this uh, study. And um, in addition to that, uh, there is a need to clarify uh, the legal framework uh, in which these activities can be carried out. And what are the consequences on the economic character vis-à-vis -vis European competition rules and in particular uh, state aid rules, the regulation of uh, state aid uh, rules. In the fifth stage about um, uh, methodology, uh, just a few words, but um, in order to uh, analyze the activities that may be uh, concretely entrusted to the EHIG, it will be necessary to identify the activities they intend to entrust to the EHIG and the activities of, of economic relevance they already carry uh, out. For this purpose, uh, a questionnaire will be submitted to the Unita Management Committee to outline which of the partners' activities are economic in nature and therefore can be entrusted to the uh, grouping. In parallel, in, uh, an um, in-depth analysis will be conducted uh, on the notion of economic activity against the backdrop of European Union case law and prevailing doctrine. Uh, in particular, in this field, a specific focus uh, will be paid on the consequences arising from the qualification of an activity as economic under European Union competition rules and, uh, uh, in particular, state aid rules or anti-competitive uh, practices. And uh, the intersection of the outcomes of the, these two um, uh, surveys will allow to identify the activities that can be concretely entrusted to the EHIG. And um, finally, to uh, conclude on uh, sustainability and a continuation uh, of the of the project. So, uh, as Barbara uh, said before me. Uh, the EGAI project aims to facilitate uh, the concrete functioning to the uh, UNITA EEIG. Uh, the EEIG should enable the partners to operate in the market, national market, European market, maybe international market, uh, under conditions of full economic and financial um, sustainability. And more precisely, the EEIJ will be able to access new funding sources by participating uh, in national, European and international uh, competitive procedures. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. I, I'm Emma. sorry for the connection. It, it's very, very bad. No worries. Uh, we, 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 I think that uh, all of us were able to follow you and you were very clear, even without PowerPoint. So no worries. And thank you very much, uh, because you underlined, uh, the pros of the EEG in a very clear way. And, and, and I, this just recalled in my mind that, uh, in fact, uh, it's true. It's a very versatile um, organization, yeah. very flexible organization, yeah. and uh, we were able uh, to draft a status uh, 
in some ways original uh, because uh, it's something in the middle between a corporation and and a university uh, we were able to imagine a body representative of all the components of universities and so even if uh, it's clear that uh, the EEG is not tailored for academic uh, cooperation. It's true that uh, it could be useful uh, to do something in the middle. Uh, so thank you very much. So I will try to um, share the Anna presentation. So uh, the next intervention will be from Anna Gascon Marchen. Uh, Anna is associate professor of, of EU a public and um, public international law and, and she is also civil servant of the at the Council of Europe. Uh, Anna will talk uh, about the test in the EEG for academic cooperation and especially about the legal tools. So please Anna the floor is yours. So first of all thank you very much for having me here and um, I also tr I'm gonna try to share my slides so with me well, um, I'll be uh, speaking about uh, the legal tools of, uh, of the project and uh, which is one of the ideas is that um, as Barbara has already underlined um, all the partners already approve and sign the status of the grouping and they are already registered with the Chamber of Commerce Agriculture and Craft of Torino. So that's already a huge step, but it's just the beginning. Um, and it's just the beginning because now we have to make it work. And uh, this is very interesting from a legal point of view because we are gonna be learning by doing uh, because uh, the statutes are registered, the grouping is created, but now it has to uh, start working and doing activities and all the necessary le legal uh, infrastructures need to be tested and this is a, a big comparative, legal comparative effort because uh, it's needed uh, to take into account all the different legal regimes. So for the objectives of the project, uh, I'm gonna explain a little bit this legal side. Uh, as Arnaud already explained, uh, more research has to be uh, used in order to see what are exactly these economic activities that the grouping can undertake. But I'm going to focus uh, more on the legal tools that will be used uh, to share human material and digital resources. And this is, as, as we have already said, a big step forward uh, towards the possible implementation of a legal status for university alliance. And uh, we will develop a toolkit of legal instruments that will facilitate uh, the concrete functioning of the of these uh, economic uh, interest groups uh, for public entities because you have to take into account that as it has been said uh, this was thought for companies but we are going to be universities using it so we have to develop uh, a new legal toolkit in order to be able to um, let's say cater it to our interest and our legal particularities so what is this legal toolkit this legal toolkit it's uh, going to be uh, it's going to include different uh, documents. The first is already there. It's the status of the uh, European Economic Interest Group. How that could look like for academic uh, institutions and a university uh, alliance. So this was offered for consultation for, to the all European academic community uh, through a publication on the relevant website. But this, as I, as I have said, is just the beginning because now we also have to draft contracts, for example, uh, to stipulate uh, the functioning of the grouping. We have to transfer resources. We have to create regulation uh, for the relationship between the members of the grouping. And uh, what could be useful also for other universities that may want to use uh, this 
particular uh, grouping would be that we um, want to create models of recruitment. So we will create these models in order to be available for the other universities that may want to use uh, this particular uh, form of grouping. So there will be models of recruitment notices for administrative and teaching personnel and other kind of models. And uh, this will give all the partners a chance to carry out an initial assessment of the functionality of the uh, European uh, Economic Interest Group vis-a-vis -vis the particular needs of interinstitutional cooperation. And it will allow for broader European academic community to put forward more specific demands for the EU, EU institutions in order to develop this uh, new possible ad hoc instrument for cooperation of academic interest. So, uh, as I have said, this is going to be a huge comparative analysis that will have to look uh, at the legal uh, systems. And this I want to underline that we will have to work with different legal layers because here we have each regime of every state. Then we have the common features, but also the conflicts, legal conflicts between the different legal regimes and also the layer of the European economic interest group peculiarities. And uh, it's not just that we have different layers when we say state or European legal layers, but also different branches of law. Uh, which are the fields that we are going to study? Mainly uh, hiring staff, data sharing, and transfer of material resources. As you could see in this table, hiring of staff may pose uh, quite a number of different challenges. The, why? Because first, you need uh, personnel that it's particularly good at what we are going to do. And this is working with international audiences coming from very different cultures, very different states, very different languages. So we need to um, understand the qualifications that should be required for this, uh, for this uh, staff that we are going to hire. And it's not just the qualification, but they also should be able to show some particular international national experience. Uh, so we will write notices in all the different languages of the of the members of the alliance as well as in English, obviously, but we also have to take into account that as we have different education systems, we have different degrees. So we have to check how to work with this without asking for um, validation orders, because if we know something at universities that this takes a lot of time, so we have to be able to hire people with different degrees that we can can understand that all may work uh, for the grouping. And um, we have also thought, and this is not particularly a legal challenge, but uh, for this, uh, we have um, an advantage that we could ourselves develop some of these uh, skills because UNITA has a lot of experience on working on multilingualism and intercomprehension. So we could even create some courses uh, to uh, work on these uh, skills. Also, because as we have uh, said before, this is an experiment, so uh, it won't be logic to get permanent staff. So the staff that's going to work for this grouping is going to be temporary staff. This temporary staff will come from two different sources. Uh, we will have temporary contracts, but we also want to tap on the resources of the different universities. So we will ask for people to be seconded from the universities to the uh, European uh, Economic Interest Group. So we have to look at how to do that because we have different uh, social security schemes, different uh, public law that applies to civil servants. Not all the people who work for universities are civil servants. Then we have administrative staff, teaching staff, researchers. So this gets a little bit uh, complicated because the legal disciplines regulating university personnel, as we know, are not harmonized at EU level. So it's not super different, but quite different from one institution to another. Then obviously uh, we want to share some data 
personal and non-personal data. So we also have to look at the challenges of taking into account uh, the privacy of the data and the different purposes, yeah, as I said, research, legal, etc. And last but not least, obviously, we also want to share uh, material resources. So we have to look into it because there are also specific restrictions imposed by public accounting rules of the different legal systems. So we have we have put all this together and we have like five uh, main questions that we will reply through uh, this legal study of how can we share personal data and also uh, material resources and we will we will try to reply during this year to all these questions and then as it has been explained uh, to uh, let's say, publicize the results both through a scientific conference and a winter school. So who's going to do all this? Um, we are going to have three legal task forces. Each of them will be in charge of one of these uh, things that I tried to explain. So we will have one that will be in charge of sharing of personal data related to research and activities, another that will be working with the posting of personal and relevant uh, compensation because these people has to be paid, obviously, and social security schemes. And last, uh, as I said, the sharing of material resources. All this will be done by these legal task forces, uh, obviously with a coordinator, and we will hire five postdocs uh, that will work also in this legal, legal toolkit. As I have said, it's important also to understand that we will work with this in theory, but also in practice, because as we start the training activities, this will feed back into the work of the legal tasks, and we will see what are the uh, main challenges that that we find, find when we start uh, to really uh, get the people, pay them, and, and so on. So this is going to be a really challenging, uh, but uh, extremely interesting opportunity to look into these, these challenges. And um, sorry again for the technical programs, problems, and I hope I have explained this, which because I know law is not very sexy, but it's very important. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. It's too low. It's not very sexy, but for us it is <laughs> in some ways. Uh, so thank you very much. It is very important to underline that the legal, as you as you did, that the legal toolkit it's is not only to make uh, our grouping operational, but uh, it would be also a contribution itself uh, to the European community because uh, our aim is to share with all the alliances interested and institution interested uh, all our work so thank you very much uh, so the next presentation will be by the colleagues at the University of Beira Interior and namely um, um, Claudia Martins, uh, who is a professor of business law at the sociology department of the University of Beira Interior, and uh, Tatiana Doadro, uh, who is a legal services officer of the University of Beira Interior. Uh, they will talk a little bit more about uh, our test activity planned within the project. So the the, the title of uh, their intervention is testing the EEG for academic cooperation, the training activities. So please, Claudia, Tatiana, the floor is yours. I think that you are sharing. But that I don't know if you are talking to because I don't hear anything. Okay, now we have a new kind of problem probably because uh, I don't hear a word. <laughs> so, please check the volume, check the microphone. Hi, good morning. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. That's great. Just a minute, I'm going to share the slides. Um, I'm here representing the University of Beira Interior that will be um, responsible for uh, 
WP3, testing the IG for academic duration, the training activities. And the main goal of this task, can you change please? Okay, just a minute. Will be to test the European grouping of economic interest as an instrument of institutionalized cooperation between European universities in order to contribute to the debate about a new EU legislative strategy for higher education cooperation and the elaboration of a new model of European grouping of academic interest. So, for that, we'll have specific objectives. Just we have to organize an activity to test the IG, consistent with its institutional uh, purposes and economy, economic activity, and the collaboration already developed within UNITA in the field of lifelong learning, with a view to facilitating upskilling and reskilling of small and medium-sized enterprises located in the partners' member states through the issues of micro-credentials. So, we also have to allow the partners with this activity to assess the economic financial sustainability of the IG, as well as different ways of investments from the partners to the grouping and its capability to organize economic activity, which is, which is suitable to reach the market. We have to serve the training needs of small and medium enterprises and NGOs that fall within the scope of the project. And elaborate contracts with the enterprise that could serve as a model for further IEI, EEIG activities. We, we also want to understand how to reconcile the Portuguese legal, legal system with the Italian governing of the IEG and what are the difficulties and how they can be overcome. overcome. So, to implement these objectives, the WP3 coordinated by UBI will be especially responsible for, first of all, drafting scientific program of the activity, like workshops and others online blended learning opportunities on the international, internationalization of small and medium enterprises and industries located in any of the partner states, aiming to facilitate the upskilling and reskilling of workers in collaboration with local authorities and with the support of regional chamber of commerce. So. We also will be just responsible for selecting the small and medium enterprise and NGOs to be involved in projecting, taking advantage of UBI's strong connection to the business and in the industrial fabric of the region and its, its experience with vocational training, as well as other programs already implemented in other universities of the group, like the program, program of the University of Savoie in Montblanc, in the field of innovation. We also have to draft contracts to formalize the collaboration and in the end write an evaluation report uh, at the conclusion of the activity. So in conclusion, this is an innovative project. We know that general challenges will occur, but we are confident that with this strong cooperation between all universities and organisms involved in it, will be able to overcome all barriers and jointly build a new model of institutional cooperation between universities and open new roads. So thank you very much for, and we are very glad to participate in this project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudia. Uh, you are right, it is a big challenge, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, we had a strong experience in this field within UNITA, so I think that uh, it will help the next presentation is by Sorina Doroga and uh, Raluca Bercea uh, from the, the University of Timisoara. Uh, Sorisa is a senior lecturer in EU law and she is also the vice dean for international relations of the Faculty of Law of the West University of Timisoara. Uh, Raluca uh, is a professor of uh, EU law uh, at the same faculty of law in Timisoara, and she is also director of the Regional Institute for Lawyers Training in Timisoara. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Serena, um, that Raluca will uh, speak um, at first, and then Serena will follow. So please, uh, Raluca, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, Barbara. I will maybe just take one minute uh, in order to emphasize how very pleased and very honored we are at UVT for taking part uh, to, to such a pioneer project. Obviously, this will allow us to um, further on um, um, deepen our excellent cooperation so far within UNITA. But also, and I think that this is uh, probably the most important part, it will allow us to test a new tool, a new legal tool. Uh, it is even more uh, important since this legal tool is supposed to work at the supranational level and to enhance uh, the academic cooperation in Europe. And uh, since we are lawyers, most of us, uh, this seems to be for us very exciting and it is indeed a very exciting project. Um, at UVT, we will, uh, for that purpose, use a team of colleagues from the law faculty, from the public law department, but also for, for, from the private law department. As it has been said, um, um, the legal um, issues that will be triggered by this uh, new cooperative uh, instrument are very complex, so we try to, to respond to them uh, as well as possible. But also, and this is very important, I think we will um, involve uh, academic staff from uh, the legal department at the level of the university and from the human resources uh, department in order to uh, to be able to uh, fulfill our our tasks uh, within the project. Um, UVT, of course, will be involved in all the activities that are uh, um, that are foreseen in the project, but um, um, mostly uh, we will uh, get responsibilities uh, under the part of organizing the dissemination and the communication uh, activities. And again, I think this is very important uh, to mention here that this part of, of our project is uh, uh, to be supported, will be supported uh, by the UNITA offices of our universities. And I'm very pleased to see here today and to greet uh, members of the UNITA offices of our universities. I very much appreciate uh, the way in which we cooperate. I'm part of the UNITA office uh, at UVT in Timisoara. And I know the work that these persons um, put into uh, into supporting uh, all the activities uh, in UNITA, uh, in, in the UNITA consortium, within the UNITA uh, consortium. Um, as I mentioned, um, organizing the dissemination and communication activities will be our most, uh, our most important responsibility. And uh, this will mainly be realized uh, by uh, a winter school that is uh, organized by uh, the West University in Timisoara and Sorina will describe uh, the activities that are supposed to, to take place during the, the, the winter school, but also within an international scientific conference at the conclusion of, of the project, the conference is supposed to take part uh, to take place in Brussels uh, and this is uh, under the UNITO um, uh, supervision. Um, so, for more details, I will I will leave the floor to uh, uh, to, to to my colleague, Professor Serena Doroga. She's not also not only the the vice dean of the law faculty, but she's also a member of the UNITA Work Package Eight team. Um, this team has reunited colleagues uh, from all the universities, and it is uh, their work that has led to identifying this potential legal form uh, of academic cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Barbara, and thank you, Raluca. It is really great to to be able to see again uh, some of the colleagues that we have had the pleasure of meeting in uh, previous uh, UNITA uh, gatherings. I will just briefly share um, a presentation. I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you? Yes. All right. So. Um, the presentation uh, is just supposed to um, to highlight a bit the coordinates of the um, Egai Winter School. Um, as Raluca was saying, this is a complementary activity to a complementary dissemination activity to the final scientific conference, uh, which will be organized at the end of the project. Basically, the uh, Winter School will um, be a sort of Preface to the to the conference, let's say, uh, the winter school, as uh, Raluca has already mentioned, will be held in Timisoara, and it will be addressed mostly to administrative staff, to project managers, um, to professionals uh, 
uh, who are associated with universities and uh, it will be open to other higher education uh, institutions, not only the ones that are uh, partners in the UNITA project, but also to other European um, alliances and all other universities that are that have an interest in, uh, in this sort of cooperation. Um, whereas the conference, which will be taking place in Brussels uh, under the, the coordination of the University of Torino, uh, will be directed to the academic community, to the scientific community. So in this way, we will be able to have uh, two events that complement each other and that focus on different aspects concerning the interinstitutional cooperation uh, that we propose under um, the EGAI uh, format. The winter school itself will be um, organized by the West University of Timisoara, um, as I said, uh, open and uh, specifically addressed to um, administrative staff and um, people who have been involved, persons who have been involved in, um, in interinstitutional cooperation at the level of um, each of their universities. Um, open to other alliances, regardless of uh, the, the legal form in which they are constituted or whether they are interested in uh, creating such a separate legal form. Um, it will have a duration between three to four days and um, there will be no uh, pr participation fee. The participation will be uh, free of charge and we will be ensuring um, we will also be making sure to to have all the logistic uh, details in place in order to to make this a, a, a fruitful experience for for all the participants. Uh, we envisage that around 40 participants will be able to uh, take part in this event, and the idea is to disseminate it as far as possible, not only inside of the the alliance uh, of the UNITA alliance, but also outside of it, because um, the the good the best practices that will be exchanged during uh, the training and during also the, the panel discussions that will be taking place in the winter school, uh, these will probably be the most valuable ones to to take uh, to each of our universities once the event is um, over. The, the idea of the winter school is to provide training and to do this in a, in a blended format, so both online and in person on matters concerning interinstitutional cooperation and to uh, bring our already acquired experience by that time we will have uh, acquired experience from um, um, from the EIG um, uh, format that we will be working with on interinstitutional cooperation on the legal instruments um, the legal toolkit that uh, Anna has just uh, discussed uh, previously and on the specificities of the EIG as a tool uh, for co collaboration between uh, universities um, and as a stepping stone, basically, for a European group of, of uh, academic interest. Um, we will make sure to deliver the support materials uh, to make them available to the participants, uh, perhaps to open them also in, in an, um, open access to, to other um, persons interested in, in these types of materials through an e-learning platform. Um, there will be sharing of um, experiences, questions and uh, best practices coming from, uh, from the participants in the winter school. And of course, upon the, the conclusion of the winter school, uh, the participants will also be invited to attend the International Scientific Conference, uh, which will take place in uh, uh, the following days, and for which uh, participation will also be possible online or in person. Uh, of course, the entire event will be built on what we gather throughout the duration of the project throughout the months because uh, both the event and the both uh, sorry the winter school and the uh, conference are scheduled to take place um, at the very end of the project so they will both benefit from the um, uh, experiences and the the knowledge that we have managed to um, to catalyze, let's say, throughout the duration of uh, the project. Um, this is uh, the information about um, the winter school, the main coordinates, and we will, of course, make them available closer to the date of the event. Thank you, Serena. Um, thank you for clarifying uh, the way to mix uh, our research 
practical side uh, with a concrete and operational side because uh, it's true that this project uh, as a public uh, which is not only the scientific and academic uh, uh, community but uh, in a more extensive way the academic community in, uh, in intended in a, in the more comprehensive way so all the uh, administrative staff and project managers who are very active in this field so uh, the aim is uh, to be able uh, to address uh, our result also to them so thank you very much and you. so um, at least but uh, at last but not least uh, we, um, I will give the floor to Alexandre Gig. Alexandre is a professor of public law and director of the Antoine Favre Legal Research Center of the University of um, Savoie Mont Blanc, and, and so. Um, he, have, um, he has a very difficult um, task because uh, he is expected to give us uh, final remarks and perspectives from European grouping of economic interests to the European grouping of academic interests. So please, Alexandra, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, Barbara. I'm going to have a, a similar problem to the one before. Uh, this is the end of uh, today's, uh, uh, well, the, the last presentation. Of course, there'll be other uh, conclusion, conclusive words. Uh, thank you very much, Barbara, and thank you very much, everyone, uh, for uh, the fine presentations uh, that have set the bar very high uh, to say a few words on the final step of uh, this uh, European project, which is and has been talked about uh, by uh, many uh, uh, partners uh, from the beginning going towards our choice of a European grouping of economic interest in the furthering and the deepening of our alliance uh, towards a European grouping of academic interest, which is uh, um, still uh, to imagine uh, giving, uh, I heard earlier on, I, I didn't know that the copyright was in Turin uh, with your rector, uh, Barbara, <laughs> uh, but the idea is to innovate from a legal perspective because obviously everyone's understood now that the European grouping of academic interest doesn't exist. It's a projection based on the particular tool that we have uh, chosen uh, to deepen uh, the UNITA Alliance. I I'm sorry, Laurence, I'm gonna, uh, there you go. So just to summarize again, the general objective uh, of uh, the project and the part that I'm particularly interested in, which is the passage from uh, the European um, uh, economic interest grouping towards the European, uh, I think it was better before, but with the presentation now it's zoomed in, but uh, the, yeah, so, so yeah, I think in all presentation, we really need to see UNITA and all the members at the top and the bottom of uh, the slides. Uh, so uh, the idea ultimately is to replace the uh, EEIG with a more uh, adapted legal tool. And it has been said today by many partners that the choice of the EIG was made not because it is an ideal and definite durable tool for the future, but because, but because we thought that it was the best tool that was available, the best tool at our disposal to move uh, forward. So part of the project is aimed at elaborating on the work that has already been achieved within the UNITA and notably the UNITA Legal Task Force to organize this EEIG to the best of our uh, possibilities. But it also requires identifying the difficulties posed by the EEIG because we uh, seek to do better and to go further, to go beyond what the EEIG enables. Uh, working towards a more integrated academic structure uh, has got two layers. Uh, we are working towards the EGAI, but ultimately the idea is to work towards a European university. So there are two layers. There's the practical layer, which is to have the bylaws of a new European legal entity. And there is the ultimate goal, which is towards the integration of a new form of university, necessarily not uh, comparable to the universities that we know in member states and respectful 
of the competences and the powers available within the main states to organize academic uh, uh, relations, uh, higher education and research, uh, but uh, a new form of university that will be elaborated based on this new uh, EGAI uh, system. So the goal is to deepen the combined management of higher education and research in Europe based on our choice of action. Uh, the relation between the European Union and the member states, it has been mentioned before by other partners. It is a complicated organization and power sharing that there is in terms of education and research with the main powers uh, being still in the hands of the member states and the secondary competence uh, for the European Union. Uh, from a practical perspective and the concrete result of uh, this uh, ultimate step is to draft the bylaws of a European grouping of academic interest. And this requires using the ex expertise that we have already acquired in thinking about the EEG, uh, the EEG, the EIG, sorry, uh, so the economic one, let's say, and the academic one, uh, elaborating on the expertise that we'll have, that we've already gathered based on the work we've done on the EE. IG to be able to identify what needs to be done towards the uh, EGAI and of course disseminate uh, the uh, results of our work and our suggestions which take the form of a proposal to the European Commission and also to our partners first and foremost uh, through a final event in Brussels. Uh, Laurence. Uh, so I tried to identify the different steps uh, which summarize the ones that have been discussed today, uh, which I call the path towards the EGAI. Uh, the first uh, point uh, is to identify the limitations of the existing legal framework, the EIG. Uh, I think Arnaud earlier on uh, explained uh, the pros and cons of the EIG, the benefits that uh, we as members of the UNITA uh, uh, alliance have identified in the European Economic Interest Grouping, uh, but we also have to look at the things that the EIG uh, doesn't allow us to do, uh, the uh, things that will uh, require modifications towards a new EGAI, because the whole idea is to replace uh, for UNITA the uh, EAIG by the EGAI, EGAI. Uh, and uh, if there's no limitations in the EIG uh, legal framework, then there is there will be no uh, need for such an academic uh, tool. This requires in particular uh, work on the legal tools already put together, and this is very recent. Uh, the regulations for the EIG, uh, the internal bylaws, uh, all the uh, connections with the uh, European legal framework, of course, the regulations on the groupings uh, and the rules in place in the different member states. It also requires uh, elaborating on the testing of the EIG, as was uh, very uh, adequately uh, described earlier, the way we wish to uh, uh, test trial uh, the uh, EIG uh, in the form of practical uh, ident uh, activities. The third uh, step is to identify the legal challenges posed by the current legal framework and the relations between the European Union and the member states. There are different layers in terms of competences and exercising powers in the field of higher education and research, so we have to study within EU law the particular difficulties that we might find with the secondary competences exercised by the European Union and uh, the uh, sensitive subject of such things as the diplomas uh, and uh, the uh, higher education uh, structures uh, and bodies in member states. The fourth uh, step, which also has been described by uh, speakers today, is comparative law. Uh, we have so many different legal systems. Uh, we have already identified in our legal task force for UNITA uh, that there are particularities uh, in the different countries that UNITA represents through its members. And an important step forward is to in identify in order to surpass them, overcome the difficulties, the different difficulties involved by the various legal systems. I remember 
uh, Arno mentioned some with state aid. Uh, there are many others that we uh, can potentially identify, not to say that they are impossible to overcome, but clearly identify them in order to propose solutions uh, in the form of the EGAI. Laurence? The fifth step is working on the legal changes potentially required, both at national level and EU level. So dwelling on the work and the expertise we'll have and that we already have on the different uh, layers of competence between the EU and the different member states, work needs to be done both in terms of a diagnostic uh, and uh, maybe changes for the future at national level uh, in terms of the legislation available in the different member states uh, and the university bylaws, the way our universities are organized and the way we wish to organize the sharing of activities within our uh, uh, EEIG at the moment. And at EU level, of course, it is to identify the way by which directives, regulations or recommendations could in the future be adapted to allow the path towards a European university, and maybe in the first place uh, towards an EGAI. Uh, that is the form of our, our proposal. Uh, there are regulations in place for the EEIG. Uh, why not a regulation on the EGAI? And this is where uh, our contribution could be made really concrete. The sixth step is, of course, drafting the bylaws of an EGAI. Uh, and this is where all the expertise gathered with the working on an EIG for UNITA will help us design something that is more adapted uh, and uh, uh, shape the proposal that we wish to make to the European uh, Union. Uh, the, these bylaws require uh, uh, work by the legal task force and by the different uh, members, but as I will say uh, immediately afterwards, by external experts uh, 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 that will be able to help in the process. Finally, drafting a report on the EGAI, which is the ultimate goal, uh, a report that uh, uh, summarizes the proposal uh, with, uh, of course, uh, the uh, way we have uh, organized it based on our practical activities within UNITA. Uh, Laurence? Uh, on practical aspects, I just wanted to say a few words in terms of uh, our input uh, at Savoie Mont Blanc and with the legal task force. Uh, working towards the EGAI requires research in EU law, in European groupings, in higher education, in the sharing of data, in uh, human resources management. And this will be done in this project by colleagues and postdocs, but also external experts, which don't appear uh, here. Uh, we uh, seek uh, to organize regular meetings and seminars, both on site and online. Uh, we will, of course, involve higher education and foreign affairs, government departments, ministries, and also other European alliance, uh, alliances. So the, the government departments and ministries who support the project and who've kindly uh, helped us uh, to organize the, the, the project. But as it was said also earlier, we will also want to learn from the experience of other European alliances who have made a different choice towards further integration of their academic activities. Um, and I, I remind here on the slide of the, the, the different aspects that could be looked at uh, and the legal aspect posed by uh, the EGAI. Uh, I already mentioned uh, the uh, dissemination workshop in Brussels. We also seek on the particular legal aspects and the EGAI, a conclusive workshop uh, on the EGAI. Laurence, final slide, sorry. And as a conclusion, of course, we must not forget the ultimate goal and the reason why we got involved as UNITA, but also uh, in the form of this project, uh, in this EGAI project. The reason why these universities are working together is because we share the common goal of integrating our activities. Uh, so uh, the EGAI is the European legal tool that uh, the, uh, the Alliance is proposing, is working on through this project. But the ultimate goal is to help the European Union and the member states work towards 
of fully fledged European university. Uh, and this aspect is, of course, fundamental in the way we wish to report on all the work that we will have done throughout the project. With all UNITA partners, of course, show a united front to the European Commission and also the member states, the ministries that are involved, and show a proposal that is already um, um, uh, something that is so worked on that it will help uh, to facilitate the further legislative and legal steps needed to uh, satisfy our needs as a European alliance. Thank you for your attention. This is what I wanted to say uh, for my part. Thank you very much, Alexandre. Uh, I think that uh, you showed in a very clear way how, how our project is multidisciplinary, uh, how multidisciplinary competences, competences are required in the field of law, but not only in the field of law, and also the comprehensive vision that we want to put forward. Uh, before concluding, uh, maybe someone in the audience want to react and make some commentary or whatever. I don't know if someone want to. Yes, and I don't know exactly your name, but from the EU relation, uh, European Group of Economic Interest, uh, Mr. DeSantis, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for this uh, opportunity and this uh, important uh, kickoff meeting. Uh, I represent uh, an uh, EIG from uh, Italy, uh, and uh, this project is very interesting for us because uh, it will be another um, approach to understand uh, per perspectives for us and uh, well in general all the legal aspect of our organization because uh, as well described in the project it is an important instrument of uh, uh, European from European Commission at over 25 years of uh, history, but it's very complex and they have very uh, differences in uh, different countries because, uh, you know, the legal status is depends by me, first of all, by the national uh, law. And uh, I hope that uh, in the, well, in the different uh, activities that uh, as, as associated or support organizations, we, we will give uh, our contribution to this analysis and thank you again and good work to the project partners thank you very much uh, also olga vessels uh, raise her hand so please Olga, the floor is yours thank you so much and thank you so much for this wonderful kickoff i was listening with great interest and i heard really really relevant things also for other alliances like eciu so thank you so much, Barbara. We were already in touch because you know that ECIU is coordinating another legal status pilot. And I would love to work together with you. So we won't focus on the um, European grouping of economical uh, cooperation. We will focus on the European grouping of territorial cooperation, the Societas Europea that was also mentioned today, the European Cooperative Society, and also the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. So it's a different focus. However, I already um, saw so many links because lifelong learning, micro-credentials, flexible learning, it's also really, really relevant for ECIU. So I think there are just many um, parts that we can work on together. So we hired some external consultants, for example, to advise us, and maybe we can uh, share our um, uh, study with you so you can also build on, on this um, knowledge and maybe also the other way around so we just strengthen each other. So I just wanted to say hi, thank you so much, and let's stay in touch. Thank you for being here and thank you for your support. And we also look forward uh, for cooperating with the ECIU. So thank you very much. Uh, any other reaction? No, okay. So I think that uh, so the, 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 this morning was quite intense. So thank you. I just want to thank uh, once again everyone uh, for all the contribution and all the work, and uh, and wish to all of us good luck for the continuation of our project because uh, 
uh, we have a lot of ambitions. So, uh, and thank you very much to uh, Ms. Uh, Maria Luisa Garcia Minguez, who, who is still uh, here and uh, very attentive to our <laughs> work. So, thank you very much and see you in the next future online or whenever, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> so, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.